So we know the LA riots popped off when Rodney King got beaten and the officers got acquitted. But what if I told you the real beginning was the senseless killing of a black girl and the slap in the face in the form of no punishment? All right, so boom. Natasha Harlins was born in East St. Louis, Illinois on January 1st, 1976, a New Year baby. In 1981, when she was five years old, her parents, Sylvester and Crystal, moved to South Central Los Angeles. But just two years later in 1983, Natasha's parents were divorced and her father moved out while Natasha and her two younger siblings stayed with her mother. Not long after that, in 1985, Natasha's mother was murdered during a confrontation at an LA nightclub. Her killer was her ex-husband's new girlfriend, a woman named Cora Mae Henderson. At the time, Natasha was just nine years old. After her mother's death, Natasha was placed in the care of her grandmother and aunt, who raised her as well as her brother Vester and sister Christina. Natasha was an honor roll student at Westchester High School and had dreams of becoming a lawyer. But like a reverse on the Meek Mill line, her dreams would never run full, but the nightmares would come true. On March 16, 1991, a Saturday morning in South Central LA, the city had been on edge for a couple of weeks, as it had been exactly 13 days since the video of cops beating Rodney King had been released to the public and plastered all over the news. Latasha, who was then 15 years old, stopped at the Empire Market, which was not far from her house, to get an orange juice. Empire Market was owned by Korean couple Billy Hyung Ki Do and his wife Soon Ja Do. Normally, Billy and his son operated the register at the front of the store, but on this particular morning, under conflicting accounts, some of which say he was working outside the market, while others say he was resting in the car. Either way, he was not in the store, leaving his wife Soon Ja Do to handle those duties. At around 10 a.m., Latasha entered the Empire Market. She walked to the back to the refrigerator section and grabbed a small $1.79 bottle of orange juice. Latasha put the orange juice visibly in the back pocket of her backpack and headed to the counter with $2 in her hand. Before Latasha was ever given a chance to put her money on the counter, Soon Ja Do accused her of trying to steal the orange juice. She reached over the counter and grabbed Latasha's backpack. Latasha then pushed back. She then grabbed Latasha's shirt prompting Latasha to again push back, knocking Sunja Du down. According to store surveillance tape, Sunja then threw a stool at Latasha, who threw the juice on the counter, then attempted to leave. Sunja Du then reached under the register, grabbed a 38 caliber revolver, and fired, hitting Latasha in the back of the head and killing her instantly. Billy heard the shots and rushed into the store. He spoke with his wife, and then called 911 to report a stick up. Soon Ja Du claimed that Latasha intended to steal the juice and when confronted asked what juice. However, two eyewitnesses in the store at that time refuted that claim and say that Latasha intended to pay for it. The entire incident was caught on surveillance camera. Court documents would later reveal that Latasha died with the $2 still in her hand. Latasha Harlan's death added to the already tense relationship between blacks and Koreans in South Central at the time. There was little to no love lost between the majority black community who lived in the neighborhood and the Koreans who ran businesses there. Korean business owners felt that blacks were dangerous and likely to shoplift, while black customers felt that Korean store owners were racist and blatantly disrespectful. As can easily be imagined, this created hostility in the hood. Lines were drawn and sides were taken. Soon Ja Du would go to trial for the murder of Latasha Harley. The 51-year-old testified on her own behalf. She claimed the shooting was in self-defense and that she believed her life was in danger. Public court documents show Soon Ja testified that although she could see the juice in Latasha's backpack, she was suspicious and felt that if Latasha had intended to pay for the juice, she would have had the bottle in her hand. Security footage played at trial showed that Soonja's claim of shoplifting was false. It showed Latasha approaching the register to pay for the juice. The security footage also contradicted Soonja's claim of self-defense, as it showed Latasha walking away and being shot and killed. The jury found Soonja Du guilty of voluntary manslaughter. They recommended the maximum sentence of 16 years in state prison. However, the trial judge, Joyce Carlin, completely disregarded the jury's sentencing recommendation. 
She instead sentenced her to just five years probation, 400 hours of community service, and a $500 fine. Sunja received no jail time, not one single day. In the words of the great poet Jermaine Cole, what's the price for a black child's life? Check the toe tag, not one zero in sight. In this case, at least as far as the court was concerned, the life of this black child was a dollar and 79 cent. Judge Joyce Carlin explained her decision in a statement at trial. She said, did Miss Do act inappropriately to Latasha Harlan? Absolutely. But was that overreaction understandable? I think it was. She then added, she believed it unlikely that she would ever commit a serious crime again in her life. After Sun Jadu's sentencing, or lack thereof, Latasha's family, friends, and the entire community was hot as fish grease. Marches and protests demanded justice were held. But later, a state appeals court unanimously upheld Judge Carlin's absent sentencing. It should be noted that a week after Latasha's death, that same judge gave a much harsher sentence to a man convicted of kicking a dog. Not killing, kicking. This just sent the tension in the hood to another stratosphere. The LAPD tried to put a band-aid on a huge wound by disputing reports that Latasha's murder was racially motivated. These statements, along with statements from Korean leaders, only caused more racial divide. Six months later, in April of 1992, while the Latasha Harlan's verdict still had the hood ready to explode, the Rodney King verdict was announced. Not guilty. Again. How? Violence erupted in the streets of South Central almost immediately, and in no time spread to Koreatown. Five days later, when the riots finally ended, more than 60 lives had been lost. Over 2,000 people injured, and nearly 6,000 people were arrested. It's estimated that nearly 3,000 buildings were damaged or destroyed. Some 2,000 of those buildings were Korean-owned. When asked, many Koreans felt that the Latasha Harlan's verdict played a bigger part than the Rodney King verdict. Empire Market was looted and burned to the ground, never to reopen again. The late great Tupac Shakur, who I could literally talk about forever, dedicated his song Keep Your Head Up to Latasha. He could be heard in the beginning of the song, a little something from my godson Elijah and a little girl named Corinne, who was the daughter of Salt from Salt and Pepper. I mean, that's another story, but maybe, maybe I'll get into that later. The video for the song opens up with the words coming on the screen, dedicated to the memory of Latasha Harlan. It's still on. And I can hear him saying it. It's still on. He would go on to reference her in songs many times. In 1998, April 29th was named Latasha Harlan's Day. I don't know the significance of April 29th, but we will accept that day to honor this black princess who never got to be a queen. In 2021, a playground that she once played on was rechristened in her name, and the mural of her shines bright on a nearby building. Latasha Levon Harlan is still on. Latasha was an A student, honor roll student. She got money every week for her allowance, so she did not have to steal orange juice. Now, what were your feelings last week? I know this is kind of an obvious question. What were your feelings last week when you saw what was happening to the city? I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. So I was feeling, I was feeling beautiful to see all the unity. But then again, I was feeling nervous because I know that America's not going to let um, the riots go on long, and I was worried that we were going to lose a lot of people. Is this a time for Hollywood to examine the images that it presents of, of, of black people and other minorities? No, it's, this is a time for America to um, look how they look at minorities. It's time for um, either you live or you die by your stereotypes. Either you live or you die by your ignorance. You know, and so either, either we change or we all fall. Now, a lot of people saying, though, that Hollywood is one of the worst 
one of the most guilty uh, people or places when it comes to putting out the wrong image. True, but Hollywood is just giving America what America wants. So if we start with America, then Hollywood won't be doing it. Just like now, how we have all these black movies, because America, part of black America, part of America is black, and we tell them this is what we want to see. And so we get it. But if all America says, you know, well, we don't want no more of that, you know, black or white, black or Mexican, and none of that.